It's, let me, it's, it's beyond that, Key. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. We saw a white girl in Iowa do mm -hmm. it to a bunch of black girls. Mm -hmm. Well, of course. That that yeah. made it like, oh, <laughs> that gave my respect. That gave my respect. I, I hear you. You're like, right. that's like, oh, she didn't do this to, to uh, some other little white girls that was over mm -hmm. here in, yeah. in Colorado, wherever. She mm -hmm. did it to some girls <laughs> from, from LSU, yeah, who we did. thought were some dogs. Defending champs. Defending yeah. champs, mm -hmm. and put them on their knee and spanked them. Spanked them. And so that, and I know, but I didn't expect. Oh, what's good? It's Frankie Diamonds TV, man. Hit that thumbs up. That's Paul Pierce on Undisputed this morning on FS1 with Skip Bayless and Keyshawn Johnson. They were talking about the Iowa LSU game last night, which actually broke records. Uh, 12.3 million people, you know, it peaked at 16 million. That's the most ever for a women's college basketball game. And it came full circle. It was poetic because it goes back to a year ago, that infamous picture, that, that shot, that screenshot that everyone reacted to and the obvious race element that was there between Caitlin Clark, America's sweetheart, best women's basketball college at prospect we've seen in a long time, generational talent, and then Angel Reese, not quite a generational talent, but a very talented, un unapologetic black girl playing basketball. And she was taunting Caitlin Clark, and a lot of people was pissed off about it. So a year later, this game was a year in the making. Everyone wanted to see this. This was the most anticipated game of the year in college basketball, period. And it delivered. Iowa controlled the game for the most part. It was competitive, but they won. And Angel Reese had her comments at the end. But Paul Pierce basically... This is what happens when you – now, Paul Pierce came on Undisputed a couple of weeks ago as a, a desperation ploy from Skip and Fox 1 to try to uplift the viewership and the enthusiasm about the show because the show hit an all-time low with, like, 50,000 views about a month ago. So they brought in Paul, and Paul's done pretty good. You know, they look, if you watch Keyshawn Johnson talk basketball, trust me, Paul Pierce has done pretty good because Keyshawn, you could tell, he's not watching anything. He's just looking at highlights. He's horrible. But Paul's on there. And this is where, like I said, Skip's got to be careful. Uh, barbershop talk is okay in barbershops. It's okay on certain, you know, certain surroundings, certain places. If this was a podcast, an all-players podcast on YouTube or something, that's different. But this is a, a daytime television show on Fox. On Fox. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think Paul Pierce might have pissed off the few people who still actually genuinely like him because a lot of people just don't like Paul Pierce. He's got a punchable face. They think he's a LeBron hater. You know, even even some of the, the white faithful in New England who love Paul Pierce because he's a Celtics legend, even he, he pissed even some of them off uh, with his comments as pertaining, as pertaining that he thought Caitlin Clark and these girls from Iowa was going to get spanked against these black girls from LSU that he said he thinks that, they, you know, they dogs. I mean, I know, no pun intended, he's talking about athleticism. It was just an ignorant way of shaping it, and a lot of people are taking it and they're running with it. I get what Paul is saying, but like I say, it's the way you articulate yourself, and you got to know you're not on – this ain't some all-players podcast. This ain't your, you kicking back, sipping drinks with KG – this is, you know, a daytime talk show on a major network. You know what I mean? And you can't just say stuff like that because now people are like, man, what is so? Is he trying to say the girl isn't good? She hasn't earned her, her, her status as the best women's basketball player in collegiate sports? I don't think that's what he was saying. He just looked at on the surface and he thought, okay, Angel Reese and these girls is going to handle this. He thought Caitlin Clark was a product of her competition, not necessarily – just her being this all-around ball player. And look, you could say it's reverse racism. Uh, obviously, b basketball has been dominated by black people for several decades. Uh, you can go back to Isaiah Thomas back in the day when he called out Larry Bird and said that if Larry Bird was a, wasn't was white, he would be just another good player. You know, I, I witnessed it as a Mavs fan, seeing Dirk get disrespected because he, he was a European player. He didn't play with his back to the basket. I watch it now, the way people talk about Luca sometimes. Kenyon Martin was was shitting on Luca on 
Gilbert Arenas' podcast. Like, oh, man, he, he yeah, he all right, but he, he ain't one-on-one. He ain't better than Kyrie. Yeah, he, he, the real basketball players know. Y'all know what I'm it's, – so it's always been that. You know what I mean? Some people in our community just have a hard time accepting the fact that other people can can be nice at this game that don't necessarily look like us. They might not be skin folk, kin folk, but they could ball. And she was killing it last night. I mean, I don't know how many threes did she hit. You know what I mean? She's all over the place. And this was a robbery uh, that that helped spark a, a, a new interest in a sport that's been around forever. And don't get me wrong. You know, LSU has a good program. So does the Gamecocks, USC. UConn's always had a good program. But robberies and superstars is really what makes sports and takes it to another level. Like the NBA was going out of business before Magic and Larry Bird came into the league and that robbery took that league national. You know, white people needed a Larry Bird so they could get interested in basketball again. And black people, white, you know, Magic was the heir apparent. It just worked. And I think they were trying to compare this. I don't know if you can do that with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, if they even both go to the WNBA because they only got a couple of days to apply for the draft. But because I don't think Angel Reese is a generational talent. She's a good player. She'll make it. But I don't think she's a generational like face of a team. Who knows? But I mean, a robbery like that could help spark interest in the WNBA because the WNBA has been around 25 years. They have no robberies, maybe amongst teams. But players, what's the best player robbery in WNBA? They don't have any, really. You know what I'm saying? Like, in most sports, there's robberies, and that's what invests fans' emotional interest and what get fans really going into these games. And that's why you see people drinking at games and fighting each other. People are emotionally and, and riled up because they care. And a robbery like this could do wonders for the WNBA if both of these girls do, do go. And Angel Reese was to come out being a really, you know, because she's already a star, you know. And she was complaining last night about how tough it is going through all of the, the the sexual harassment and all she's being sexualized and she's getting death threats and you know but that, that's just going to continue as she continues her journey as a star but yeah Paul Pierce you know probably wasn't the worst the, the way he worded it I get what he was saying but it was the way he worded it and a lot of people was like what what do you say is he trying to say she's only she's only got good because she's white Oh my God! Oh, they've been <laughs> they've been killing Paul. They just skip Bayless. You're like, man, like any publicity is better than none. At least people are talking about undisputed, but not in a good way. But I mean, they they got to do something because they 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 got to get rid of Keyshawn Johnson on these basketball topics. He is awful. If it ain't about the Lakers, he don't know what he's talking about because he only watches their games as a LA fan. He don't watch nobody else. And he got these dated opinions from months and months ago that aren't accurate currently. He's horrible. But yeah, Paul Pierce, this is the Paul Pierce experience on Undisputed. And I'm sure they'll continue to see some of that that raw and uncut barbershop talk. I mean, this is Paul Pierce. He's going to keep it a bean. You know, <laughs> say Paul Pierce that was smoking OG on Instagram with a mega million dollar contract with ESPN. Paul does not care. But let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Hit that like button. I'm out of here.